don't want to be last on stage. Falling apart. Well, good morning, church. We're glad to see so many new faces coming back. They call themselves snowbirds. Welcome home. Uh, this is where you belong, so it's good to see you. Awesome. Uh, yeah, let's stand, because we're going we're gonna to read the word, and we're going to sing a new song that uh, we're going to introduce. I'm excited about this song, and you'll see why. We're going to do it today. We're going to do it next week. We're going to do it the week after. It's it's great. Uh, praise the Lord. This is Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And I will praise the Lord all my life. And I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Let's put our hands together because you're going to need it for this song. I love songs that get you moving in the morning. This is one of them. Let's go. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Because he opened the prison doors. And he parted the raging seas. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. My God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We we'll shout out your praise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Yes, he does. He hung upon that cross and he rose up from the grave. But my God still rolling stones away. There's hell in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running. Accept it, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Put your hands together, here we go. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Let's give a hand to God and 
Let's have a seat. Jeff, come on up, man. All right, good morning. Thank you, praise team. That reminds me, my buddy Charlie Davis used to always say, if that doesn't light your fire, then your wood's wet. <laughs> oh, great to be in the house of the Lord today. We welcome each and every one of you. Um, just want to, oops, I didn't bring a bulletin with me. Do a few announcements. Thank you, Diane. That's why she gets the big bucks. All right. Um, I, well, the first one I'm going to announce, because it's me, is next Sunday morning, 9 a.m., be here. Mother's Day breakfast. Good food. And, I, um, and uh, attached to that, I guess I have to say there's not going to be Sunday school next Sunday. I almost thought about not announcing that, and then I can say, well, I had the biggest Sunday school class ever, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, 9 o'clock, come. There's something for everybody. We've got unhealthy food and healthy food and some ones that are in between and hopefully we'll have what you like best. Yep. Uh, workers, men, will be cooking the breakfast for the women and be here at 7.30. We'll start, um, get everything done. We'll have a great time. It's a great, if you haven't ever done it, um, it's a great opportunity for fellowship. You start working with guys, you're talking with guys, it, it really builds fellowship and it's a great thing. They don't have much of a leader, but other than that, it's a great thing. <laughs> Diane, you had an announcement. I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the ladies who helped with Mother's Day or, or May Day yesterday. I think we had a really nice time. Thank you for inviting all of your friends if you had friends that couldn't come or you couldn't come, go on our Facebook page because you can see the service. You can't eat the food because we already did, but you can enjoy the service anyway. And I just want to say we had great music and Becky's granddaughter, Jordan, was just wonderful. It was so cute. So thank, but thank you and especially thank you for the men who cleaned up afterwards. It was amazing. I heard Bob Ben Vleck even was going to wash my precious moments, and Bill told him no, and he should have let you because they were dusty and you knew it. But it was just thank you so much for the men that made it really special, too. So it was a great day. Thank you. So much. Oh. Reminds me when I was at Your Avenue, they used to say, most churches say, until we meet again. Here we say, until you eat again. <laughs> We'll have two in a row here. That's great. Um, got the Spring Life Change Sunday is May 2nd. Today. Huh? Um, the uh, National Day of Prayer is May 6th at noon. Meet at the Maple Lake Pavilion. Sunday, May 9th, Mother's Day breakfast. I already did that. Um, May 16th, 6 p.m., Letters to the Church discussion. That was, if you haven't read it yet, um, pick up, there's books back here in the narthex. Um, the Letters to the Church is a really interesting book. Um, a lot of good ideas. Um, I can give you a little, well, don't want to do long, but give you a quick idea. Um, it's about a, a guy that founded a mega church. And right when the mega church was at its peak, um, felt the Lord is leading him, he gave it up and went over to first India and then China and did small churches there and was so inspired by the small churches that he came back here and he, he leads a whole movement now on small churches. It's Francis Chan. Yes, thank yeah, you. That's it. Yep, Francis Chan. Uh, really good, interesting book though. Like I say, there's copies back there, um, pick them up, then we have that discussion. Uh, Sunday, June 13th, there we are, we're gonna eat again. We'll have a birthday bash potluck after church. And talk about, you're leading that? Okay. Next Sunday, we'll be announcing that. Um, isn't it great to have so many activities? Yeah. That's one sign of a church. We know this church is not dead, right? Yeah. Friday the 27th, 2 p.m., ladies' garden dessert. There we are eating again. <laughs> At Diane Barton's house. And so that's going to be good food. <laughs> and last one is uh, August we're going to start the Vacation Bible School. And there's a lot of planning and work needs to be done on that. 
Uh, thanks to those who are leading that and who are organizing that. Uh, is there anything else we need to know before we start worship? Chuck? I'd like to remind everybody the life chain today at 2.30. Uh, New Hope Fellowship will be meeting on the west side of Westridge in Portage, north of Millam, uh, next to Panera Bakery. For those of you who are not familiar with Life Chain, Life Chain is a peaceful, prayerful, public witness for life. The Life Chain is called to the church to stand before God on behalf of the children affected by legalized abortion. Please stand with us in repentance and prayer, seeking change, hearts, and healing for the North America. Thank you. Okay. Let's all pray together. Oh Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. One day in your house, Lord, is worth a thousand elsewhere. We just hope today that the continue the praise team's message and uh, Bob's message this morning will touch each and one of our heart, each and every one of our hearts, and that we will grow in our love and service of, service of you this day and every day. Amen. Let's stand and worship again. That is 
small church in, in the United Arab Emirates called the uh, Oasis uh, Church, and it was an evangelical free church out there. And uh, it started as a small church with barely anybody there, And but every time that church would end, we would stand and we'd sing this song, and we'd hold hands, you know, because we used to be able to do that. We used to stand and hold hands. That was so cool. Now that church has grown to thousands and multiple congregations. There's uh, all, all nationality congregations there, and, and it's amazing. But they still stop and sing this song. One day, I come in, and I see my wife singing this song with my kids as a prayer, and it's become a tradition. Praise God from whom blessings flow.
Awesome God we serve. Amen. I'm going to be reading from Matthew 5, verses 11 to 16. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be to be trod under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. This is our city. We are on a hill. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This church. It's set here for a reason, and it is not hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. A candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. Are you living in the light of God? Do you think others are watching and seeing you in your daily life? Believe me, we are being watched by others. I used to be watched by my co-workers when I worked. Every once in a while they'd comment on my work attitude and my work ethics. They couldn't understand how I could keep on doing my job the way I was and given by bosses who were rude and sometimes mean. I would just tell them that's just the way I am. If they inquired further, as some did, I would tell them the way I used to be, how I acted, how I fell, and how Jesus came to me and gave me a new life. If Jesus could take all that he did for me, all that beating and abuse, he did that for me and for you. He saved me from my own condemnation. Being obedient to him in my job <clears throat> and doing my job as God expected me to was the least I could do for him in return. Funny thing about it, <clears throat> a lot of the time those mean and rude bosses would treat me better than some of the others because of my work ethics and the way I did my job. Sometimes I got persecuted by my co-workers for my ethics, calling me a kiss butt and other, other wonderful things. I've also been persecuted for the hats that I wear. Now, some of you have seen my hats. They proclaim Jesus. I went to a dealership one time <clears throat> to do a pickup, and one of the guys there gave me a hat. He said, here you go, here's a new hat for you. You need a new hat. I gave it back to him politely, said, no, thank you. I have the only hat that I need. We get persecuted because of the truth. And most people don't like the truth because it exposes them. With all this knowledge, it is important for us to understand that others are watching and we need to live in the light of God so that when we, the persecution comes, we can stand and that the ones watching will be curious enough to inquire so that we can share our story of God's grace in our lives and encourage them also to follow Jesus. That is why we're here, and this is what we're supposed to be doing, living in the light so that we can be a guide for others. We have nothing to lose and everything to gain. <clears throat> Let's pray. 
Most Holy Father, of all that was and is and is to come, we thank you for all that you have given us and for all that you do for us. We are not worthy of your grace, yet you forgive us and bless us abundantly. We pray, Father, that you will continue to be with us. Join us today, Lord, as we come together to worship and praise you. Draw us closer to you, and we ask, Lord, that you would draw closer to us. Fill this church, this people, with your love, grace, and understanding. Give us the power and strength we need to stand strong when persecuted, and fill us with your light for others to see, so that we can be the guide you want us to be. Father, top of my list is Heather Ward. Father, you've shown your power to me. You've let me see things that I never thought I'd see. I believe, Lord, and I know that if it be your will, you can work healing on Heather. And Lord, I pray that if you would, give her a healing, make her whole, and give her back to her children. I pray also, Lord, for the Ward family to give them strength as they care for the children, the grandchildren. Father, we lift up Rachel Raymond to you. She's doing better now. She uh, was doing better and she had a, a problem with the Lyme disease. We thank you, Lord, for bringing her back. Lord, we also pray for the healing and the blessings that you've given to Jeannie Glass, Jenny Brandt, Brad and Joan A. Bird in their marriage, Mary Lee Corwin's surgery, Todd Skogin, Chuck Kuyper, Crystal, and Kristen, uh, and Jesus uh, Vega Mission. We also pray, Lord, for those who are still waiting for you in healing. We pray for Diane Kellogg, Gary Myers, Jessica, uh, Janine, Jeanette's Van Bleck's granddaughter, Sharon Lovely, Chris, Tanya Spears, Ken Ratzleff, Heidi, Jennifer Van Bleck's friend, Heather and Goebbels, Cindy Behrman, Gary Mann, Jeannie Franklin, and the Bailey family. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. We thank you, Lord. We also, Lord, we lift up the entire Ward family to give them comfort and peace and be with them, strengthen them. We pray for Pastor and his family that you bless them and keep them moving forward. Lord, we also ask for your justice in the Risner family. We pray that you would work your powers and healing who's left. Rejoining that family under your care. We also pray, Lord, for uh, Jack, who is in Haiti, doing a special job for you. We pray that you keep him safe and return him to us safely. And finally, Lord, would you, we pray to you the Lord's Prayer. Join me, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for the great God we serve? We were talking a little bit this morning about miracles. Some people think that miracles are all done. There is teaching that says that the miracles, day of miracles ended with the days of the apostles. I'm sorry, but that's not the way it is. That's not the way the word of God says it is, and that's not the way it is. <clears throat> 
Excuse me. Those years ago, I used to sing in a choir. It was directed by Anita Rummery. Some of you may know uh, may know Anita. Now I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <clears throat> She's gone on to be with the Lord, and that song is in the presence of Jehovah. I was gonna try to sing that this morning, but I think I'm just gonna read the words for us. In and out, no. In and out of situations that tug a war at me, all day long I struggle for answers that I need. Then I come into his presence, all my questions become clear. And for that sacred moment, no doubts can interfere. In the chorus, in the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. Through his love, the Lord provided a place for us to rest a place to find the answers in hours of distress. There is never any reason for you to give up in despair. Just slip away and breathe his name. He'll surely meet you there. This song reminds me of a lot of things. And one of the first of them is the name Jehovah. You know, I, knew, I know that God is called by a lot of things, a lot of different names. I, should say in, in the Bible. And I did a little research and, and uh, I found that Tony Evans has a list of 82 names of God. <laughs> 82 names of God. I'm not going to go through all of them, but Jehovah is one of them. And many of them are compounded names of Jehovah. Jehovah Elohim, uh, the Lord God. Jehovah Saba, the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord my banner, Jehovah Elohim, Yeshua, the Son of God. And there's so many more that describe who God is, what he does, what he will do, and, and these types of things. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we just ask you this morning for uh, the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Speak to my heart, speak to every one of our hearts through your word this morning, that we might just learn to come to go closer and closer to you, Lord. To love you with more of our hearts as we've sung this morning and to give you praise and worship. We just ask these things in Jesus' name. This is the one thing I wanted, the one name I wanted to focus on this morning is uh, Jehovah. And looking at, at, at um, different explanations, the name Jehovah means Lord, Master, and it can mean relational God. Lord, Master, and Relational God. The question that's been floating around in my mind a lot of time is, can God be God without being Lord? Can God be God without being Lord? In other words, is it possible for us to say, yeah, God is God and still not own him as Lord of our lives? And sometimes when I have questions like this, I like to go back to the Old Testament and just kind of see what happened in the nation of Israel in some of, these, uh, some of these circumstances. And I think most of us know that many times Israel would call God their God, but then not do what he said. They'd say he's, he's, he's your God, but yes, but they, he, they just didn't do what he said. There were times when he was one of many gods that they worshiped because they were living in this in this idolatrous pagan culture, so they just slipped Jehovah in as one of the other gods. In other words, he was a god in word only, and he definitely was not Lord of their lives. Matthew 12, 28 reads like this. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus said, is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And I wonder if, you know, in this country that we live in, we don't really understand what the word Lord means. In many countries of the world, they've got kings and, they, and queens and, and, and this type of thing, and they, and they bow down to the king. When's the last time we bowed down to anybody? 
That's just not in our culture. We don't do that in our, in our country, in our culture. And I think that this word Lord sometimes has kind of really escaped what it really means. One thing that we see in this definition of Jehovah, uh, again, is that the name not only means Lord and Master, but there's also this meaning and this idea of Jehovah being a relational God. And, and this, is, this is really the thing that sets Christianity apart from any other religion on earth. I don't care, you can go to Buddhism, Hinduism, Shintoism, uh, Islam, none of them have, these people have any kind of a relationship with their God. God says, you do this, and they do it, or they go to hell. That's it. It's often been said that Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. And we, Christ we Christians have a relationship with our Lord God, and it's in that name, Jehovah. It means relational God. Now, somebody might ask, well, what kind of a relationship? Through the Old Testament, we read about the relationship between God and his people being cared, compared to the relationship between a husband and a wife. This very close, intimate relationship. We read in the book of Revelation about the marriage supper of the Lamb, which speaks about Christ and the true church, us, Christians, people. This is the relationship that God wants with his people today, an intimate relationship, a close fellowship and relationship with you and with I. He doesn't want anything coming between that relationship. How do we know that? Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, he says, I am a jealous God. I, the Lord, am a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4.24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Joshua 24, 19, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. Nahum 1, 2, God is jealous. 2 Corinthians 11, 2, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. God is jealous if we have any other gods, if we have any other lords in our life. We the people are the church. That includes you and I. Paul was concerned here that the church's love should be as pure as a virgin's love for one man only. And by virgin here, Paul meant one was somebody that was not affected by false doctrine, false teaching. But there is still this relationship between God and his people being compared to a husband and a wife. It's over and it's over and over in the word of God. And I think, you know, God put it there to show us how much he wants to have a relationship with us. I had a young man, uh, ex-inmate, was about a block from me, and I, I've been wanting to talk to him. I saw him yesterday, we got to talk, and he apparently works for a, his, his boss is a Christian man, and, and, uh, and this friend of mine was telling his, his boss that he prays, he prays to God. And this Christian man, boss asked him, he says, well, are you saved? And... Uh, and the young man said, no, I'm not saved. And his boss says, well, then God doesn't hear you. And then, of course, he asked me. <laughs> Does God hear me? I said, yeah, he hears everything. <laughs> if he's going to answer, how he's going to answer, I don't know. And then I tried to use the this, this same example that, you know, well, it's a different example. Is that when, when we get saved, we, we're part of God's family then. Then we're his sons and his daughters. And yes, he's going to, just like we... We answer our kids' questions and so on. But anyway, God wants this close, close relationship. If we go back to Mark 12, 30, we see that we are to love the Lord our God with all four aspects of the human personality. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. Loving the Lord with all our heart means that He, he is the source and the object of our greatest desires and passions. He's the source. The very core of our affections have to be centered on him. It means that we're completely faithful, we're completely devoted to God, and that his purposes direct every aspect of our lives. His purposes. 
we need to ask ourselves a question sometimes. It sounds pretty radical, doesn't it? To give that much of ourselves to God. But that's what he wants. That's what he wants. What has he done for us? His only son. He, didn't, he hasn't withheld anything for us, from us. Why should we withhold anything from him? Our love for the Lord has to be the, a love that directs our lives. You know, it's, it shouldn't be just a part of our lives. It should be what directs our lives, our love for the Lord. I think sometimes we, we, we need to ask ourselves the question, is our love for the Lord like this? Maybe some will think that it, it's kind of drastic, like I said, but, but again, stop and think what the Lord did. If we really meditate on his love for us, if we if really stop and think and meditate on what his love is for us, it should be a great motivator in our loving him. And this is what it means to love him with all of our heart. Next, it says, love him with all of our soul. The soul can be described really as, um, as the core of who we really are. The core of who we really are, the real you, the real me, our deepest longings, our emotions, our convictions, these should all be focused on Christ and how we can bring honor to him. Actually, our identity should be one with Christ. If he's living within us, he's living through us, our identity should be completely one with him. We call ourselves Christians, Christians. Christians, that's Christ. We identify with him. We are one with him and he with us. And then loving the Lord with all your mind. It shows that serving him and loving him is not just a matter of feeling or emotions. Not just a matter of feeling. Or, it's a deliberate act of our will. I will love the Lord. I, re I remember a, a, a famous evangelist, uh, his, his, his brother, and they were both from India, and his brother living in Canada, was going to send back to India for a wife. And, and, uh, and this evangelist told his brother, he said, well, how can you do that? You don't even know her. You, you, you know, you're just going to marry her immediately? He said, and, and, and his brother kind of chided his brother. He said, brother, you should know. He said, I will love her. I will love her. It's a matter of of, of uh, doing it with all of our mind is the deliberate, deliberate act of our will. We will, we need to make up our minds, we will love the Lord. We should seek to please the Lord with our thoughts and ideas that should be based on the word of God. And why is this so important to read and to meditate on God's word? You know, we need to have that word in our minds so much that it's right on the tip of our tongue. When the enemy comes with temptations or doubts or fears or anxieties, the word of God needs to be right there. And, and this is where the Holy Spirit is, is so important, where he can help us. The word of God says the one thing he does is bring the word of God to our remembrance. But if it's not in our remembrance, if it's not in our mind, he got nothing to work with. He can't bring it to our minds. Loving God with our minds means that we do what we know is right. And it goes beyond what we feel. It goes beyond what rejection we might face. Look at the rejection Jesus faced. It didn't change his love. We do what we know is right. And we know what's right because right here it is. None of us have any excuse for not knowing what's right. And then we love the Lord with all of our strength. This means our best energies go uh, and efforts go into serving the Lord and promoting his purposes. Um, it's obvious some of you here are really uh, putting forth some energies to get new people coming into the church in different ways, and that's great. We should be doing these things. We should not be slipshod or wishy-washy about serving him. Sometimes serving and loving God can be exhaust, exhausting. It can be. It can be. There's, there, you know, there's many, many, many ministers and preachers of the gospel and, and other things too. They get burned out because they don't take time to rest. 
They don't take time to rest. It, it can be an exhausting thing. But we're still supposed to persevere in our faith. Keep on keeping on. This is one of the things I tell so many Christian guys in jail and prison. Yeah, there are some Christian guys in prison. Uh, you got to keep on keeping on. Being obedient can be painful sometimes. Like I said, ask Jesus. He was obedient to his heavenly father, wasn't he? And it turned out pretty painful for him. It turned out pretty painful. He certainly loved us, and he loves us with all of his strength. And he asks us, asks us the same, asks of us the same. Let's look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. See, there it is. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true, this is your true worship. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. Offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. That's what Jesus did. He asked the same of us. Sometimes we're willing to do a lot of things, but when it gets into possible pain or saying no to our bodies, it gets a little harder, doesn't it? But this is the way we are to love God. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says this, You were bought at a price, therefore honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your bodies, even if it hurts. Take strength. Where do we get that strength? Go back to Acts 1.8. It tells us that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on us. This is where we get that power and strength to please God in our living for him. This is where we can get the power and the strength for living for him. I want to go back to this song in the presence of Jehovah for just a minute. The songwriter says, in and out of situations that tug a war at me, all day long I struggle for answers that I need. Anybody here ever have days like that? It seems like we're tugged one way, another way. Should I do this? Should I do that? Is this politician right? Is that politician right? Are they both wrong? <laughs> I should be spending more time in God's word, but the responsibilities I have, I just don't seem to have the time or the energy. Even sometimes one preacher says one thing and some other preacher says something else. That ain't so. So what do we do? What do we do? We struggle in life sometimes. It's nothing new. There's many ways that you know, we are all different here this, mor this morning, but there's many ways we're all the same. We're all human beings, right? We're all the same. There's so many things that we all go through. They're the same. It's nothing new. The songwriter says, all day long I struggle. But for what does he struggle? He says, the answers that I need. When we have questions, we want answers, don't we? We want answers. Haven't we all asked the question, even of God sometimes? Haven't we always said, why? Why, God? Why did my friend or my relative die of COVID? Why is there even such a thing as COVID? God, why can't I get a, can I get a better job? Why, why, why? Maybe it's what should I do? What, what, what? What do I do? What do I say? Questions, questions, just so many questions. And we all have them. But then the songwriter goes in and he says, but then I come into his presence. I come into his presence. In Psalm 73, Asaph had a lot of questions, mostly about the wicked that were prospering and things like that. He basically was asking God why. And then in verse 17, he says, then I entered the sanctuary of God. In other words, he got into the presence of Jehovah. He goes on and says, then I understood. Now, Asaph did get an answer. But it's not always like that. Job did not get an answer to his questions as such. 
God did answer him, yes, but not like Job was wanting an answer. I thought that it was interesting that the songwriter said that after coming into the presence of Jehovah, all my questions become clear. He didn't say he got the answers. He said the questions became clear. I think he, he's saying that if, you, if you're in the presence of Jehovah, the questions don't matter. The question doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're in the presence of God. You're in the presence of the God of the universe. You're in the presence of the Almighty. You're in the presence of love. You're in the presence of the Prince of Peace. You're in the presence of the most indescribable one. No doubts can interfere. Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. Something supernatural happens when you get into the presence of Jehovah. Something that can happen no place else except in his presence. And you know, we don't have to be perfect to come into God's presence. Far from it. I'm not a very patient man. In the last year, I, last year, not last year too, but yesterday, <laughs> I sort of lost my patience. I didn't say anything to anybody, but you know how it is in your heart and your mind. Oh. But this morning, God let me into his presence. I asked for forgiveness of what I did, and what I thought. And this morning, Jehovah let me into his presence. Perfect? No, I'm not perfect. We don't have to be perfect. He just wants us to come. And to have that fellowship with him. Confess it if we've messed up. He goes on and he says, Through his love, the Lord provided a place for us to rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me. We have to come to him. He's not going to go around pouring out rest and peace and joy and all that. We've got to come to him. We've got to come to him. Come into his presence if you're at rest from all the stuff we hear about and see about that's, that's going on in our world today. Come into his presence if you're burdened down with personal problems of any kind. Into his presence. Another line in the song says, a place to find the answers in the hour of distress. It's not hard to fall into distress these days, is it? You look around and get caught up in what things that are going on, there can be distress. If we get our eyes off the Lord, if we fail to read and meditate on his word, and yes, sometimes we do that. Sometimes in God's wisdom, he'll give us an answer, a direct answer. Sometimes it's a little later. Sometimes it's a lot later. We talked about it. Sometimes it seems like never. But let me tell you, if you get into God's presence... Sometimes, uh, the answer, not sometimes, the answer is simply God. Just him, just being with him. The last couple lines say there is never any reason, never any reason to give up and despair. Just slip away and breathe his name. He will surely meet you there. He surely will. I know this morning this message is for those who have repented of their sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as the substitute for their, their sins. But Roman 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Your name will be written in the Lamb Book of Life. And all these things we've talked about this morning will be for you. You can have the inexpressible privilege of entering the presence of Jehovah and spending time with him. All of us would be excited if we were invited to some dignitary's home. Listen, God invites us into his presence every day, every hour. He wants to spend time with us. He wants way more than you or I do. And that's amazing. It's, it's an indescri uh, 
under, indescribable understatement that he wants to. If we just knew how much God wanted us to stop and come into his presence. The almighty God of the universe wants you to spend time with him. I pray that every one of us will make it a part of our walk with the Lord in these last days. To spend more time, to spend this precious time with him. Let him fill us with more love for him, more love for the lost and dying world around us. Chuck's got it right. This church is a lighthouse here. We need to be a lighthouse to this community, to this county. Let us become more and more and better and better acquainted with the Holy Spirit and more and more time in the presence of Jehovah. He'll fill us with that love for him. He'll fill us with the love and the power for the lost that are all around us. He'll fill us so that we can be the lights in this world that he wants us to be. All for his glory. Amen. Amen. Father, we just pray this morning that you will use us, Lord, that you will just lay a burden upon all of our hearts, a love, a deep love in our hearts, somehow that we will know how much you want us in your presence, and that we will want that more than anything else in our lives, to just get into the presence of Jehovah, our Lord, our Master, and one who wants to have us in that relationship with him more than anything else. And just use us for your honor and glory to be the testimonies and the lights and the witnesses you've called us to be. Father, we just ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and worship again.
timers I guess I did forget to mention it was pointed out to me that there was some confusion about the breakfast next Sunday it isn't just for the ladies you know we're doing it on Mother's Day but it's for everybody everybody's welcome come on down and so if there's any confusion don't be everybody come Eat, be here at nine o'clock and hopefully you will not be disappointed you want me to dismiss them? Sure. okay let us pray together oh Lord give us the strength and courage to love and serve you this week to do it in public lord and do it before all so we can be that lighthouse in this community lord and that our light may show sign, shine before men that they see our good works and glorify you lord and let, that we do that this and every day represent you as your people amen <laughs>